Hi everyone, I hope you're doing very well. My name is Juan and welcome back to another book review. So today we're going to talk about the great novella The Death of Ivan Illich by the Russian writer Leo Tolstoy. And if you appreciate my reviews and would like to show your support, please give this review a like and subscribe to my channel. That way this video will get to more people who might also enjoy it. Thanks! Okay, so let's talk about The Death of Ivan Illich, which was first published in 1886. Let me ask you uh, some questions that are relevant to this book, okay? Have you ever thought about death? Have you ever thought about your own mortality? Have you ever thought about your life as something finite, something that is going to end? Do you believe there is such a thing as right living? Have you ever made any decision in your life thinking about how you might feel about it just before you die? The death of Ivan Illich is a story that makes us think about those questions and others like it. The main character is Ivan Illich and there is nothing really special about him. He's one of those nondescript people. Although, you know, I sometimes wonder whether most of us would be nondescript to most people who meet us. But anyway, my point is that Ivan is an ordinary man. He's hardworking and formal, perhaps too formal with people that he shouldn't be that formal with, like members of his family. The story begins right after the character's death and then there is a flashback that will culminate with the very moment of his death. The story is meant to contain a moral lesson around the question of how to live one's life. One could live an artificial life and we see examples of this in Ivan's wife and some of his friends or an authentic life. You, okay, that's the second option. And the authentic life is exemplified by Ivan's little son. So an artificial life is characterized by materialism and superficiality. For example, as soon as Ivan's death is announced, his former colleagues begin to think about what that might mean for their careers, how their friend's death is going to affect their careers. Although the setting is Russia in the late 19th century, the story has become a classic because it still speaks to us. A lot of people live an artificial life guided by materialistic principles now. It's not something from the past. People still behave like that and that makes this story immediately recognizable to us. Now, the death of Ivan Illich is a story about death, uh, which is to say that it is a story about life. Death is the only universal certainty there is and yet we generally don't like to think about it. And when we do think about death, we tend to think about other people's death. It is unspeakably sad, of course, when somebody we love dies, but how often do we think about our own death and should we think about it more than we do. It seems to me like the focus should be on life rather than death and I think that in this story the focus is on life and not death actually. So more than moving I would say that the death of Ivan Illich is a beautifully uh, beautiful thought-provoking story. I love Tolstoy's Anna Karenina but I think my favorite work of Tolstoy I have so far read is The Death of Ivan Illich. I am planning to read uh, War and Peace this year, so that might change my mind. Um, and I will certainly report back on that, okay? Uh, by the way, I have already reviewed Anna Karenina, so I'm going to link to my review here in case you would like to hear my thoughts on it. And well, I think this is all I can say about this incredible novella, The Death of Ivan Illich, without spoiling it for people who have not read it yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to summarize the plot and talk about the death of Ivan Illich in more detail and there will be some spoilers. So, you know, you have been warned as usual. If you don't want to hear any spoilers about the death of Ivan Illich from me, you should stop watching this video right about now and I will see you again very soon, I hope, for another video. Okay, and for those of you who are still here, I am now going to summarize the plot as promised and I'm also going to share more thoughts I had on the death of Ivan Illich. So, the death of Ivan Illich begins with, well, the death of Ivan Illich, a high court judge in 19th century Russia. Peter Ivanovich announces his friend's death to a group of judges, former colleagues, who almost immediately begin to think about what this death will mean for their careers. Then, later, Peter goes to the funeral. There, the widow, uh, Praskovia, asks Peter about how she can increase the government pension she's now due to get. 
Then there is a flashback and the narrative moves to over 30 years ago. It is then that we find out more about Ivan. We learn that Ivan has two brothers. We learn that he studied law from age 13 and then went on to become an examining magistrate. Later, Ivan marries uh, Braskovia. Their marriage is peaceful until she gets pregnant and her behavior apparently changes. In turn, Ivan becomes more focused on his work and grows distant. He becomes more formal with his family from that point onwards. Gradually, his career progresses. However, he doesn't get a post he coveted and this makes him furious. So he takes time off and moves to the country with his family. Eventually, Ivan goes to St. Petersburg to see if, if he can get a better job. He gets a better job and sets out to buy a new house in the city and furnish it before his family can move in with him. So he buys a house and one day when he's hanging drapes, he falls off the stepladder and suffers a minor injury. Despite this minor setback, Ivan begins a new life with his family in St. Petersburg. Then he gets ill, but it is not clear what he's suffering from. All we know is that Ivan grows irritable because of his illness. His condition also worsens quickly, so much so that he even begins to think about his mortality. Ivan's wife is not sympathetic, which in turn makes Ivan hate her. Uh, he's haunted by the thought that he's going to die soon. The only person who can um, comfort and take care of Ivan is his servant Gerasim. Gerasim is more compassionate and understanding than anyone else in Ivan's uh, family and in Ivan's life. The problem is that those closest to Ivan do not want to see that he's nearing death. Everyone pretends that Ivan is just ill. Ivan feels like the only two people who understand him are his little son Vasya and his servant Gerasim. One night Ivan has a strange dream. In that dream someone pushes Ivan into a deep black sack. Ivan has a contradictory feeling in the dream. He wants to fall into the sack, but he's also afraid of that. So when he wakes up from that dream, Ivan hears his inner voice for the first time. Days go by and all Ivan does is lounge on his sofa, wondering and pondering about life and how much joy there was in it. But he also begins to question if he lived his life right. And he thinks again about the deep black sack he once saw in a dream. Then pain strikes. Seeing his son and his wife there, Ivan feels sorry for them. And at that moment, he realizes that everything in his life was artificial, even his family. But the last thing Ivan feels before dying is extreme joy. So the story begins with the announcement of Ivan's death. And then we go back years and Tolstoy masterfully builds up until the very moment of the character's death. I think I would recommend this novella to older people, generally people over 30 or 40 maybe over those ages. But I think it can also be interesting for somebody younger than that to read it. In fact, I don't believe uh, that there is a right age to read specific books. I think your maturity, your interests, life experience and mood at a given time are more important factors. So, so if uh, what I have said in this review picks your interest, uh, don't think about it twice. Just go ahead and read The Death of Ivan Illich. And if you have already read it, please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you haven't read it yet, let me know what you think of my review and if you think you will read the novella now, okay? And of course, you know, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with your friends on social media. You can also follow me on social media, on Twitter and on Instagram at Bookish Islander so we can talk about books on other platforms too and that's a lot of fun. This is all from me. I hope to see you again very soon for another book review or bookish video. Bye for now.